Hello, Iran's heaviest load. In this presentation, I will discuss three basic questions. The first part of this presentation will focus on the very concept of national identity, and I believe the problem with which we have to grapple before addressing this question of national identity. In other words, the first part exclusively addresses the concept of identity and specifically the concept of national identity. The second part of my presentation is actually my claim that going back, not just from 1300 to 1400, meaning going back from 1921 to 2021, which is today, but even if you go back another almost 100 years, it seems that the most general characteristic of Iranian culture and society seems to be their predilection toward religiosity. And I am going to show and demonstrate that historically, if we highlight the most important events, social, political, and economic events, even international events, all of those events are som somehow related to this concept of religion and religiosity. So that's the second part of my presentation, which is my claim. The third part of my presentation will discuss the prospect and what is in store in beyond 1400, in other words, in the new upcoming century, and what it means, what are the ramifications, if I'm correct in my assessment, that religion and religiosity has play, have played a major role in developing what we call national identity, then what are we to expect in Iran's near future or the next 100 years? There is a problem with this question of national identity, especially for uh, ancient civilization and um, older countries. But in general, the very concept of national identity is problematic. To make the point, let's compare with the formation or actually the development of identity in individuals. Uh, sp specifically, when you move from adolescent period to adulthood, how do we develop these identities? Uh, again, with the national identity, it becomes doubly more difficult because you're talking about not a span of 15, 20 years, let's say from teenage age to maybe 20, 25, when you become an adult. But you're talking about hundreds of years of history that basically has helped develop this national identity. But the question is relevant, whether national identity is analogous to the development of identity with the individual or not. The, que the two questions are very relevant. Who is developing this identity with the individual, and when this identity is developed or formed finally. As you know, with the individual, there comes a time that an adolescent come to ask this question, who am I? How do I go about expa explaining the world around me, and what really constitute who I am, independent of my parents or my family or my, all, all the other institutions. So that question, and then the question of when we form this identity. Now, as to the question of who, uh, 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 the question is when it comes to national identity, who is to determine what is the national identity of a nation that has been in existence or a nation state that has been in existence for hundreds of years or centuries? Who? Is it the majority of people? And how do you ascertain that, the, 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 that identity from the majority? Is it, as Rousseau calls it, the general will will decide uh, the national identity? Or maybe the Hegelian, uh, the spirit of the people, somehow is manifested through our culture, and that's the national identity? Or is it a Heideggerian? average everydayness practices. It is in those practices that we can see or detect a national identity of some kind in, 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 in our culture. Or should we look at the regimes of power who basically 
that basically have shaped or formed this national identity, defined, redefined, and re-emphasized for the people. And therefore, you, we need to look at the regimes of power throughout history and find out what is the latest manifestation of this uh, 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 concept of national identity as the regime has defined it or has tried to define it. So the question of national identity is, is, is complicated. Even, at, even if you compare it with the individual, we think that an adolescent eventually comes to some kind of a maturity that is conscious of previous influences and therefore can independently form or answer this, form his or develop his identity or basically redefine his own identity. But this is very difficult because individuals even are situated in a cultural context. Individuals are the product of time and space and therefore they're not totally divorced from everyday institutions, cultural, political, economic, and religious institutions that have helped create, develop, or form their identities. So that becomes doubly problematic because then we have to go and deconstruct these institutions to, to see what national identity or even individual identity is to the extent that we think that's a conscious decision. But also it could be un unconsciously we develop and here are the elements of irrational or unconscious, unconscious decision how individuals or cultures develop this identity. Now, having said that, then we go to the second point. My claim is that if you look back, not only the last 100 years, but even if we go back to Amir Kabir and the middle of the 19th century, when he tried to modernize Iran, you will see that there is not a single major event in the history of modern Persia that has not been influenced or dramatically driven by the religious authorities and religious beliefs. I'm going to go through a number of them, but this can be explained in two different ways. One, that people are religious, period. Two, that maybe people are not as religious as we think they are, but religious authorities exert a lot of influence on the people and therefore the role of religion and religiosity and the role of clerics is so pronounced in the history of modern Iran that you cannot discuss anything like national identity or national character without discussing this predilection toward religion and religiosity. So here it goes. Let's start with, of course, 1844. The reason I, I mentioned th these dates because I want to show you that the, in the, during the past 180 years, this has been the constant pattern in the de development of modern Iran and, and, and Iranian culture. The Babi movement in the middle of the 19th century is the prime example of this kind of religion and religiosity. Uh, it, this, you can see how this has, was developed uh, uh, and how it, it became a major uh, reformation of Islam and the Shia Islam, and it created a, one of the biggest, most important upheavals in the history of uh, uh, I I modern Iran. Of course, uh, uh, another important date is, of course, the constitutional movement in Iran. But aside from the constitutional movement that, that everyone talks about and, and we hear a lot about, we need to, to look at um, the tobacco uh, concessions and the tobacco pro protests. This is another highlight. This one has to do with the foreign influence in Iran. And the third incident is basically the constitutional movement in Iran 1905 incident, that it is very pivotal. Again, here, the role of the clergy is quite uh, pronounced. Even the division of the country into the Mazhabiyun and Meliyun, the nationalists and the religious, exemplifies this. But we go beyond this. Even when we get to 1921 with Reza Shah's modernization attempt, you see that uh, how Iran is, has to grapple with religion and religiosity 
that basically resist or resents this kind of uh, 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 mod modernization, and the clergy plays a major role. One of the biggest in incident is Gohar Shad incident that, that uh, goes to show you how it became a major crisis just because Reza Shah wanted to modernize the way Iranians dress or the type of hat they wear, and to, to, to implement this in Khorasan, in Mashhad, that was a major incident, and, and it's one of the hallmark uh, events in the history of I modern Iran. Mohammad Reza Shah's uh, White Revolution is another incident that sees the rise of Khomeini, the, ri the, the rise of, uh, uh, in Iran, and the objection of the clerics. Uh, to this. The point, though, is that even if you look at the prelude to the revolution, think of doctrines that was disseminated to basically uh, revolutionize Iran. Two major figures, I should say, are very pivotal during the 60s and the 70s, uh, uh, namely uh, Ali Shariati and Khomeini himself. And then, of course, the establishment of Islamic Republic in 1979, which is done. Really, the question I'm asking and what I'm pointing out to is this. In what kind of a culture, in what kind of a society, the leader of the most significant revolution in Iran ends up being a clergy? In what kind of a country and in what kind of a culture, the communists of all kind, the nationalists of all kind, the two-day party of all kind, they rally behind a religious figure to basically end 2,500 years of monarchy. There is something about the culture that lends itself to this type of leadership and this type of sensibility. The best example, the paradigm example that I want to finish the, my talk with is what happened during the Constitutional Revolution, but actually what happened 35 years earlier. There is a figure called Mirza Yusuf Khane Mustashar Dole. He wrote a book called Yek Kalamed, One Word. In that book, he tries, uh, uh, he tries to make two points. The first point he's trying to make is that sovereignty ultimately rests with God, and everyone else, including king, the king and the pauper, are basically ruled. The second claim he makes is that all the modernization that we need has to do with having good constitution and good laws, trying to emulate the French constitution and the French Bill of Rights. However, here's the kicker. His entire book tries to prove that every modern form of government and every rights, human rights, are entailed in the Quranic verses and the Hadiths and when people like Akhun Zadeh say, look, you're trying to use religious doctrine to promote this, he says, I, I'm doing this because I don't want people, I don't want, he used a passive voice, people to say that he's trying to change or change our religion. In other words, regardless of that, if the question of religion and religiosity is one of the most significant events. Now, as to the last part about the prospect of new century, if what I say is true, that through all these major key events, religion and religiosity has played a role, Iran as a culture has to deal with the modernity and postmodern now sensibilities. Most importantly, it has to deal with globalization. My claim is that if what I said is true, then religion and religiosity will play a major role in the next century because Iran not only has, has to grapple with the question of modernity, but also has to question with the vicissitudes and changes that globalization is going to bring about. Iran has three choices. One, to adopt these globalization forces. Two, to reject and dig deep uh, 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 and, and emphasize the religious and or try to modify. My point is regardless of what approach they take, religion and religiosity will be the major theme of the next century.